Um, we're very keen to get people involved. So if you are a member of the RSC and are interested in this area, please do uh, get in touch. Um, we're very happy to, to uh, receive new uh, active members. And we're really looking at scientists who cover application, all applications of chemistry on the industrial scale. It's really all about bridging the gap between process chemistry and technology and, and promoting innovation and uh, promoting inclusion of, of all parts of the community. The heart of the presentation will be going through the, the highlights of several case studies that are intended to showcase how kinetic modeling can add value to process development, really emphasizing why kinetic modeling should become more the norm in, in R&D departments. Several of these case studies stem from my own work, while, while others stem from webinars hosted by Scale Up Systems or, or other publications. And at the end of the presentation, uh, Charlie or I will provide a link to a PDF of these slides where the, the active links to the webinars hosted by Scale Up Systems are available. And, and these are available to watch on demand. You can see from my Monty Python, Monty Python cartoon here, I'm, I'm really trying to play to the crowd a bit uh, with a reference to some British humor. But, but as this cartoon implies, this, this presentation is very much a persuasive piece on why kinetic modeling is essential and what it can do for you uh, in, in process development of reaction. And uh, what this mean, uh, typically means to me is uh, modeling with a specific purpose in mind and applying the modeling at the, at the right time in development. We highly encourage people to consider minimizing the, the terms and equations in their models for, for connect modeling and, and just focus on the critical elements of the process that they, they wish, to, uh, wish to design. Uh, another theme is new procedural changes that are often only realized after developing a, a kinetic model and, and, and understanding the mechanism. This could simply be a, a new heating or cooling profile, or it could be the order of addition of, of reagents, or even new reagents or reactants that, are, that leverages the knowledge gained from studying the reaction kinetics. This work involved a biocatalytic trans, uh, transamination for the production of dextroamphetamine from phenylacetone and isopropylamine. It was catalyzed by a, a transaminase. In this model, we really focus just on the critical elements to achieve success and to answer the key questions and concerns for, for scale-up. In this approach, we, we really avoided expending a lot of effort making a perfect model. And, and to expand on further what I mean here, we did, we did not try to model the few impurities that are formed, as this was a fairly clean reaction. And in addition, we did not try to, to model across an expansive parameter space, as we found that there are some significant limitations of the enzyme to be active at, at high temperatures, high organic content, or extreme pH ranges. So we really limited ourselves to modeling a, a very, fairly narrow but achievable operating space. We modeled the reaction kinetics by uh, classical michaelis minton enzyme kinetics, and most importantly, uh, the physical mass trans transport of acetone from the process uh, and its impact to the reaction kinetics. So to maximize our yield of this, this particular reaction, we, we found it was necessary to push the equilibrium towards higher yield with high excess uh, of isopropylamine, and also to pull the equilibrium towards higher yield by removing acetone through a nitrogen sweep. This reaction tended to take over 24, 24 hours to reach reaction completion, and the rate and yield was, was very variable with the nitrogen flow rate into the reactor. So the, so the reaction kinetics were, were still at the forefront uh, of the problem, but we, we focused our modeling efforts on the purpose of understanding the impact of the nitrogen sweep as it was seen critical to our uh, a successful scale-up. As shown in the slide, we, we modeled the reaction kinetics using the proposed mechanism shown in the process scheme uh, to the left. And in addition, these uh, reaction rate equations were combined with the mass transfer rate equation for acetone leaving the system by the nitrogen sweep. And luckily, we were able to track all the main species, including acetone by HPLC. So in these graphs I've shown on the right, uh, I've shown the consumption of, of phenylacetone, the formation of dextroamphetamine, and the solution concentration of acetone in the system. The solid lines here represent the simulations, while, while the points represent experimental data. And as you can see, the model was able to accurately predict the reaction kinetics and, and the behavior. As you may note here, we also evaluated different scales, different flow rates of nitrogen, and scenarios where the flow rate was too low or completely interrupted, causing the reaction to, to slow or to stall. After measuring the KLA of acetone mass transfer and new equipment, we could, we could then accurately predict the, the interplay between uh, the chemical and physical rates, and therefore we could predict the time it would take to achieve our desired yield for a given mass uh, gas flow rate, and, and also plan for the nitrogen flow to achieve the reaction time and succeed in scale-up. 
this type of work was was especially helpful in our, in our tech transfer and communications to our manufacturing colleagues to explain why so much nitrogen and a high flow rates were required, which was atypical for our plants. Virtual experiments and contour plots really provided a valuable tool to communicate the impact of the parameters on the reaction performance and aid our selection of a design space. As shown in the bottom figure here, a, a trapezoidal design space was selected in, in what we call the, the worst case projection of the parameter space. This approach reduced the parameter space and simplified our communication to the parameters with the greatest influence on the reaction performance and, and, the, and the parameters with the greatest risk for variation. This design space was ultimately presented in a QBD filing of the drug substance with the uh, health authorities, where we specifically highlighted the use of the model to aid our design space selection. This, the software is completely tailored towards kinetic modeling and, and is intended to be a tool for every chemist and engineer when, when studying reaction kinetics. Some of the really nice features can be seen in this animation. Uh, you may immediately notice that the, the chemistry is shown at the top of the interface, and the software keeps the chemistry and mechanism at the forefront of the model building. This, this really keeps the chemistry central to the model development and, and always in consideration when exploring alternative mechanisms. This is preferred by, by many chemists and, and engineers, such as myself, um, rather than reducing the chemical structures to abstract letters and formulas um, in the software where the underlying mechanism or, or chemistry may be forgotten. In addition, it also allows users to easily access and add chemical structures and some automated checks for material and charge balances, you know, some of those conservations that can be easily forgotten when, when just writing equations. We've heard some, some really favorable comments from, from users, such as this could be the, the missing piece to getting more scientists to model and how this software is a huge time saver. So we are continually looking to improve this tool and, and help aid those less familiar with kinetic modeling while also providing a really powerful tool for more experienced modelers and, and scientists. 